My name is Aaron Houck. I'm an assistant professor of sculpture at East Central University. As a young child, I, I played with Legos and constructs and Lincoln Logs and, and things, so I really consider myself to be you know, more of a three-dimensional person, and most of the work for Art365 will be uh, three-dimensional. Most of my work, at least from the last uh, four years, has referenced consumerism and its effect on the environment. And uh, while this particular project doesn't relate uh, that specifically to consumerism, it's kind of based on some similar themes. And I wanted to, to do a project that was more historical, kind of juxtaposing uh, objects from material culture from the Stone Age and material culture from uh, our current contemporary culture. And so what I'm doing basically is comparing uh, artifacts from the Stone Age with artifacts that are similar uh, from today. So I have uh, probably the most uh, useful tool from the Stone Age, the Clovis Point, which is a very uh, specific type of stone implement and uh, smartphones or iPhones. Aaron Huck piqued my interest um, mostly through his exploration into commercialism and commodity. Um, whether it's digital prints, sculpture, new media, the kind of all-encompassing exploration with a consumer culture, um, particularly of his generation, the kind of what he's deemed Generation I and um, the culture that's just uh, is so dependent on all these tools and gadgets and for our day-to-day -day existence. Um, and from that, his proposal for Art365 resonated um, because it, it's kind of a faux anthropology um, uh, of sorts, uh, creating a, a fictional ethnology beginning with the Clovis points as tools from indigenous people in the Oklahoma area and pushing it all the way um, up to kind of our obsession with gadgets. Um, he is making um, Clovis points and sculptural installations of cell phones and uh, devices of communication in this like super hyper palette, um, extreme plasticity. Um, and I just think the way he is doing that um, is providing like fodder for future anthropology uh, projects. What does it say about our own existence? Um, you know, exploring culture and history together, but um, with a little humor. I'm remaking these, these very primitive tools, and I'm, I'm inserting kind of uh, the same kind of thing that, that we do with our cell phones, at least um, for the early part of the last decade, where everybody's phone was, was unique, Every, everybody wanted to have, you know, a, their, their own faceplate, um, people even, you know, sometimes attach rhinestones to their cell phones. I guess what I, I, what I think of is if you ever go to a big mall, there are those kiosks where you can get any type of faceplate for any kind of phone you can imagine. And so these Clovis points are kind of like if there was a kiosk, you know, back in the Stone Age, these people would be trying to construct an identity just like contemporary man does, but through Clovis points. One of the things that I wanted to do with this project was to learn uh, new processes and learn to work with new materials. And since I was juxtaposing a very uh, you know, ancient tool with a very contemporary tool, an iPhone or other smartphone, I decided to make the Clovis points out of cast resin, and uh, specifically polyester resin and polyurethane resins, which are both uh, materials that are used in lots of different commercial products, including cell phones. The second component of, of my project involves thermoforming plastic, and the, uh, the thermoforming process involves uh, having a, an object that you're going to make a copy of, and then you put a sheet of plastic over it. And that sheet of plastic is, is heated up until it becomes very uh, malleable, and then it's introduced to a uh, some some sort of suction device, and it sucks the plastic down around the object that you're trying to copy. With that project, I'm making very large-scale Clovis points that will almost look like, like a fast food restaurant sign outside. Um, that's also something that I've never done before, and I've spent months trying to piece together little bits of information from the internet to try to create my own uh, thermoforming machine or vacuum table. And so that's been 
another thing that I would have never been able to do, or at least had the motivation to do without the Art 365 uh, project and the, the financial uh, assistance to be able to go out and purchase things that normally I, I wouldn't. One of the other really nice things about the Art 365 uh, project is that I'm able to work with a, a nationally recognized uh, art critic and curator in Shannon Fitzgerald and that's been a really wonderful experience having somebody to bounce ideas off of and, and uh, get suggestions back and it's really helped to shape this project and uh, I think that down the road as we get closer to the exhibition there'll be an even greater exchange of ideas and I'm really excited to see uh, where all this goes and how it comes together uh, at the gallery and um, it, in a lot of ways it reminds me of my MFA project back in grad school because you know I've got somebody that I need to, to, to report to that's you know that's going to keep me in check but also uh, help me to create the, the best work that I possibly can so it's been a really enriching uh, relationship and uh, it's, it's just it's, it's a really neat deal I, I'm really excited every time I get an email from her every time I talk to her it's it's really great. His experience as a teacher having this first opportunity this is the largest consideration for a show he's had um, and, and for an essay um, and he's just curious I mean I think um, with all of the artists you hope to build confidence in what they're doing and um, that's certainly the case with Aaron. The amount of time I think is really necessary for a project of this magnitude. I think having a full year, 365 days, is, is a really great thing. There's, not, there's a lot of pressure, but it's not like you have a month. You can really think about things, and I tend to work really quickly. I mean, historically, I work really quickly. I can knock out a piece in a week if I need to. Uh, but th so this is this is kind of a change for me, and the perspective I think is has caused me to kind of mature a little bit as an artist because I don't have that constant pressure of getting something done immediately. And so instead of rushing into mistakes, I'm not rushing into things, and I'm thinking about things, and I'm making the right choices because of that. So the full year is a it's a really generous amount of time. Um, that I really enjoy and I, I continue to enjoy every day.